Hey everyone, Mondays with Mark Allen. Welcome back. Your amazing racing last weekend. Sam Long and Kerry Lesser took home the titles at Ironman Coeur d'Alene. Sam and Lionel going at it for a little bit of time and then Lionel really fading. Hats off to him for finishing. It was really, really hot. This is what the temperature was out there. That qualifies as hot. Amazing day. Congratulations to all the athletes who finished there. I was actually in Williamsburg, Virginia for the Rev 3 race that was going on there. A lot of the pro athletes who are vying for the, the Collins Cup later this summer were racing there. I was there with Karen Smyers. We're co-captains for the U.S. team that will be competing in the Collins Cup. We were doing a little bit of scouting, just seeing how the athletes look because when you see somebody race in person, you really get a different feel for them than if you just you know, see a result or, or even watch it online. Andrew Starkowitz, one for the men, doing his classic, just busting it on the bike, going super hard, had a big cushion, didn't even have to run that hard to win it. He said he could go even faster on the bike, amazing. And then uh, for the women, Emma Pallant won. It was also pretty hot there. She crossed the line, literally uh, just moments later collapsed. They had to bring her into the medical tent. She was pretty delirious, really out of it. They iced her down and, and fortunately, Within about a half hour, she was standing back up and she was smiling and she could savor her victory. But it was, it was just one of those moments of note to self, Emma Pallant is willing to push herself beyond all limits, no matter what. So I'm gonna keep an eye on her and, and she'll be a big factor when we're deciding who's going to be in the matchups at the race in the Collins Cup, if she's there, because I will be there. Karen Smyers will be there. You know, I'm probably a little bit delirious and tired myself today. I was on the last flight to come home yesterday, Sunday evening. The flight got canceled, a mechanical. Had to spend the night in Williamsburg, Virginia. And the, the counter agent gave me a voucher for a taxi to get to a hotel, a, a hotel voucher, and, and then also a food voucher, because with a mechanical, they do that courtesy for you. He said, just go outside, get a taxi, show them this coupon, and if nobody's outside, just call one of the numbers on the board. A they have, there was a taxi board. Williamsburg is a small town, small area no taxis in sight. I called one taxi company. It was an automated system. They said, we will call you back shortly once our driver has been contacted and then we'll give you the estimated uh, arrival time. This is all automated. 20 minutes later, no call back. So what do I do? I go down the list. I call a couple other companies. They all have automated reservation systems for the taxis and the next ones can't understand my destination. Maybe at this point I was delirious, it was evening, I was tired, I'd been up since 4 a.m. For the, for the race. Finally I go, I'm just gonna call Uber, pay for it. Took an Uber, got to the hotel 10 minutes, checked in, came down with my meal voucher and the front desk attendant says, our restaurant has not been open since COVID. I figured, all right, so I'd buy my own meal. If I was home tonight, I would be buying my own meal anyway, so no big deal. I resort, went back up, scrolled through Uber Eats, found a, what looked to be like a great Mediterranean restaurant, ordered some food. The Uber Eats driver pulls up, gives me my bag. I go upstairs. The Mediterranean food was a bag full of Indian food. I tried calling the Uber, uh, Uber Eats driver back, but numbers are blocked. You can't call them back. I go on the website. There's no way I can contact this person. I figured, okay, I guess I'm having Indian food tonight. I'm halfway through the meal. The Uber Eats driver pulls back up. Apparently, front desk calls and said, hey, he mixed up your meal. He's got your food for you. I go, I'm already halfway through the other one. So I came down. He said, here, it's courtesy anyway. I can't take it back anyway. So this is what my spread looked like in my free hotel room. Enough food to feed a village. At this point, I'm feeling kind of cynical, like the world is going mad, it's going, everything's going bad. And then I realized, wait a minute, have you forgotten the lessons of COVID that quickly? A year ago, I wasn't traveling. A year ago, I would have given anything to be able to go to a race, even if it meant spending an extra night because of a mechanical failure on a plane. Not a big deal. To walk across country would take me six months. 
an extra day to fly home, not a big deal. First world, first world problem. Don't forget those lessons of COVID because we are, we are back out there. We are having these opportunities to race. Somebody else who was racing this weekend at Ironman Coeur d'Alene was my son's girlfriend, Nicole. Her first Ironman took her many years to get there because of cancellations of other races that happened. She was gonna do Santa Rosa fires and smoke and she got injured. And anyway, she in, was in Coeur d'Alene yesterday. She was sick right from the beginning. Before she even started, she was throwing up and, and uh, my son called and he goes, geez, what should she do? You know, cause she was already in the swim. And, and I said, well, it, either she has the flu and if she has the flu she won't make it very far and you'll know that if it's just nerves at some point she will throw up enough that she'll get kind of weak and then she won't have the strength to be nervous anymore and then everything will turn around she'll be just fine so don't worry either way I don't think that was the advice he was hoping I'd give but she did turn it around she didn't have the flu she was just nervous I guess and she ended up finishing the race as I was eating my meal, that's when she was getting close to the finish line. And I have to say, when I saw it come across on the tracker that she crossed, made her first Ironman finish, I was, I was emotional. It was like, um, you know, it's a, such an effort and energy and risk. You just don't know if you can complete the race, especially if you've never done one before. But even if you have done one, look at Lionel Sanders. He suffered in Coeur d'Alene. And it just prompted me to, to text my son and Matt's and his girlfriend, Nicole, and just say, hey, you know, this is, this is what Iron Man is really about. And this is what I wrote them. And I want to read it because I think it, it kind of it applies to everybody. It's simple, it's basic, but it, it sums it up. I said, this sport is so frigging hard. <laughs> In the text, I used the, the more raw version of that word frigging. This sport is so freaking hard and it takes so much and you just have no idea if you can do it and you doubt yourself, but you go to the start anyway and then you go and then it does get hard and then it gets impossible, but you've gone too far and put too much into it to quit, but you still have no idea if you can make it and you, you are raw and alone and in it and your family and friends are pulling for you, but there's nothing they can do to help but to hold you in their thoughts and they don't want you to be disappointed if, if you can't finish, but then you make it to the next point and they have hope for you and you get to the next and they wanna do something to give you energy to keep going and then something happens and you and they both know it, it will happen, but there's still miles to go and then there's only a few miles to go and then only a few steps and they see you and you see them and you both can do nothing but yell and cheer and cry and you are totally spent to the core but you did it and well you did it isn't that what iron man is it's this it's this challenge that that we willfully take on how many things in life that are really difficult really challenging that test us come by choice this is one of them and when we do it when we put that energy in there and we give it everything we have, when we cross that finish line, it's empowering. We learn something about ourselves through that journey. It empowers us. We are also humbled by it. And that's what makes it so amazing. Congratulations to all of you who raced last weekend. Have a great week, everyone. I'm flying home to San Francisco now, finally, a day late. We'll see you next Monday.